Welcome to CSC 200 to EX9 contact form. Most of this video was previously recorded, but I'll be adding some updated notes until we do our second video. And this video will just kind of be an overview of what we're going to do for this exercise. It's going to be very similar to the last one, except we're going to be using a contact form. And we're setting it up like it's a contact form for yourself, but actually, you, you know, if you were doing something for yourself, you could take a form that actually returns the data in email form, but we're going to try to set it up so it actually uses a server and creates a database, kind of a, a larger scale kind of operation, something that you might do for a client. So that's the way we're going to set this up. And what you're looking at here is kind of the form that a clients would fill out. They would put in their first name, last name, email, cell number. I just put a couple things in here so we'd have a little variety. Different from the other form is a text area where people could put in a message that has a little more text than typically is in the input field. And then also we have radio buttons here where people could click on different radio buttons from this list. Now radio buttons and check boxes are a little different. Radio buttons only have one that can be chosen, whereas with check boxes you could have multiple values that are chosen. So we're going to use radio buttons for this one where only one value can be chosen. And then there's a submit button at the end. So we're going to set this up and this again I'll just give you a little overview of this of how it was set up and how we're going to do this. Actually let's take a look at our database first and I'm going to go on a map and we're going to create a database and this is created right now. There's no data in it right now. There's just the columns that are set up or the fields that are set up and we're going to add information to our database using our form. So that's how we're going to do it and we're just going to make one that's called, we're going to make a database that's called contacts with your initial. Mine is called contacts RH. So you're going to call it contacts JB or whatever your initials are and then you're going to have a table called contacts and that's all we're going to do for this one and there's going to be seven columns, one being an ID and then six that people will fill out in various ways and you can set this up in PHP my admin. You don't have to use it. You don't have to set it up using code or writing SQL queries to do that. We could just set it up in here and I'll go through doing this. But this is the version that's already set up. And again, I don't if I browse, you'll see there's no there's no items in here right now. There's no records in here. So I'll go back to structure just to show you what the setup is. There's an ID, which we'll just start at one and it's going to auto increment. And that's just an integer. The next couple that we have, last name, first name, email, and cell, are just going to be varchar or varchar, you know, 30 kind of setups for that. The message one is going to be text. That allows for, for a lot more text that can be put in there. And then the referral will just be varchar, even though that's going to be coming from the radio button. It's going to take the value from the radio button. And, and one thing I just want to point out is that we're, we're not going to put this in now, but for things like emails, you can set up a lot of validation so that an accurate email is put in there so that it can actually test if it has an at symbol, that it has a dot symbol, and it has three letters at the end. But we're not going to do that right now. But keep in mind that there are, you know, in PHP, we can set that up to do that, to, to actually validate. And, and you don't always have to do that all yourself. You could find code that helps validate for that to make sure that it's an email or make sure that it's a cell phone number or things like that. But we're, we're not going to do that for now. We're just going to assume they'll put in they'll put in information for that. And if it doesn't, we're only going to make a couple that are required. Just the, the first three are going to be required. The email, first name, and last name. And we're not going to require them to put in an actual email. At least we're not going to do that in this exercise. So let's take a look and see how it works right now. And I'm just going to fill it out. And I'll just I'll put Steve in here. And it's going to be Steve Martin. And we'll just put his email. I already have it here, martin at gmail.com. Put a cell. I'll just put a kind of general one two three four five six and then one two three four I'll just put something just as a filler in here and even if I want to put a, a a larger message in here I can copy some text I'll put in I could even go here and use a dummy text generator or lorem ipsum I'll just copy some text here and throw it in here just so we have a bigger kind of chunk of text to put in there so I'll copy this and put it in my form and I'll paste it in here and I'll choose this is how did you hear about us and I'll just put Google search and then I'll submit my form and we'll see if it works and this is what happens it's again very much like our other exercise we have our header here and then here's our first record it's Martin and it goes by last name first Martin Steve here's the email here's the cell here's the message and I'll mention how we keep this narrow like this so that it doesn't kind of spread out across the page and here's that. So that's basically what it's going to look like. We're going to put in some different records in the end of this. But let me hit go back to here right now 
because I just want to show you this this area first if we take a look at our folder that we're going to download it's going to be called ex8 contacts just so you can kind of recognize it a little better there'll only be two files there'll be your index HTML which will have the form and then there'll be your display PHP will it'll actually display it on the page and that's what we did when we're looking at this one right now this is our index one because you can see in localhost we're not seeing the file name because when it's index it just kind of goes to the default home page so it doesn't show index.html right now so this is our index page and I'll just show you what's on the index page briefly um, you can see it says contact form for title there's some styles internal styles here in the style tags there's form there's styles for the form which just kind of increase the font size the font family puts it in a sans serif font just puts a little margin on the left side uh, for the labels I'll just point out what we do for the labels the that puts a little space on either side of the label here uh, inside a table now this is inside a table and I'll point that out in a minute but that's what some of these things are these things input text area font size they make the sizing a little bit bigger uh, TD these are table tags these are table elements padding bottom puts a little space below each row uh, and then here it takes away some of the space in the rows because actually what happens here we put some space after each row here and then down here we didn't want as much space so we take that away and that's basically how it's set up now I, I just want to point out here that this is as a table this is set up so it's two columns here's a column here's a column and then these are rows there's actually 11 rows there's actually one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and 11 with the submit button everything is broken up into 11 rows it was just easier to do that than trying to set up the CSS to move some of these things around so it's set up in a table two columns 11 rows and one of these I guess these are all set up so that there's a little bit of padding on the right side of here and then this is set up so it's aligned to the top we had it because typically in table cells the information is kind of aligned in the center so normally this message was aligned to the center we have to move this up and I'll show you how we do that and down down here this is another row and basically I did a column span it's kind of like when you when you work with a table in Word or you work in Excel you merge cells this basically merges the two cells together it's called a column span but it basically kind of spans the two columns in here so there's there's nothing there's that's why it goes across here because there's nothing in this cell it kind of spans across and then these are in the cells and then these are just non-breaking spaces over here we kept these over here so that they still line up so that everything lines up so that's the way this is set up and then down here this is aligned right inside this bottom row so that's why it's just easier to see it you know viewing it kind of top to bottom left to right it's easier to see the submit button when it's aligned right at the bottom rather than underneath over here so that's why that's set up and it, it took a little a little bit of tinkering to get that right and I'll show you where some of that stuff is as you look through the table code so that's so this is set up as a table it just helps organize things and align things a little bit better than trying to use a lot of CSS to do that so going back at our at our code I'll show you here's the code and I, I put spaces here so you could actually see there's one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11. These are the 11 rows, and I, I broke them up so you could see them a little bit better. They start with a TR and they end with a TR. That means a table row. And then the cells are actually the TDs. So some of these TDs have a label. That, well, I think they all pretty much have a label for the most part. Some of them have non breaking spaces. These rows here with the non breaking spaces, these are, are the radio buttons. And the way radio buttons are set up, is basically their input type radio all four of these have input type radio and they actually have the same name called referral but they have different values so that when they're checked they'll actually pull the value of Google search social media client and other so that's where we'll, we'll get that from that's where the the value will come from and you can see down here we actually just put Google search Facebook social media existing client and other they're actually just put in another cell it's easier to put them in a cell rather than use labels so these do not have labels like the other ones do how these kind of have labels these are basically just have text in another cell so if you go if you look at this you can see that it's in the same cell as the radio button just followed by a non-breaking space and just a couple things to point out in here I do have this is HTML but there's something called via line top I had to put a 
vertical line top in within the table the table data tag just so that so that that message kind of aligns top so that everything aligns to the top because otherwise it would be in the middle so that's what keeps that's what keeps this kind of aligned together otherwise message would be in the middle here so we did this aligning top so it's aligning top in the cell this will be set up already so that it'll be going to the right page. It's not display B. It's just going to be display.php. We don't need an A or B. It'll still be method post. And we're still going to have this on submit return check fields because we're still going to have the JavaScript in here. It'll still have a validation for the first three, the first name, last name, email. So you are going to have to put in a first name, last name, and email for it to work. You don't have to put in the other things. You could leave them blank and it'll still work. So that's our HTML and our display PHP is going to be again very much like the other one that you just did. So you're just going to be changing values in it. You're going to be changing the database. Everything else will be the same. Uh, for the variables they'll be a little bit different. You're going to be using six variables for the first name, last name, email, cell, message, and referral. We'll shorten some of these the ones that have two words will just shorten to first last that's what we did last time but we'll set them up like that and then everything else should be the same other than just kind of adjusting certain names in here adjusting the the table names from contacts uh, adjusting the names that are in here I had to put a little tweak in here and I'll show you how to do that in order to make this thing narrower and I had to actually put it you can't put a uh, a class or a style for the TD to make it narrow or just didn't work so we had to put a div in here thanks to stack overflow for that so we, there's a div style that's going to be put inside there so that our information will go into a div that that's given a specific width so that it won't be as wide as everything else this will just be a short message and you can see we have this I put in the same name and it's got the same same email but it's got a different cell number and here's a different message hey there and it's got a different other here so that's the way these will get set up as we have more items added to the database this column here message had to be set up with a div to make it 200 pixels wide or otherwise it, it like squashed everything and it made this really wide so that's the only way we were able to do that with this little div that's in here which is an internal style it's div and then it has a internal CSS style in here that gives it a 200 pixel width and then the closing tags and again they have to be inside the quotes that's why we're alternating quotes with the double quotes and then the single quotes and then the headings are just the same except we just change the heading name so this should all be very similar to what you just did and then you're just gonna have to change these and make sure you're using the right column names make sure make sure that everything matches up correctly or else you know you're gonna get a query error so so that's the way it's set up so that's pretty much the overview of what we're going to do and I'll get you started on the next one. I should only have to do one more video. I'm not going to go through every little step of the, of the code because most of it's just kind of adjusting things from last time and, and you'll know how to do that. So I'll give one more video where I'll just get you started and, and go over some basics on this and then you should be ready to go.